denied it. I've already given my opinion. So what are we to make of that? Joining us is Judy Miller, adjunct fellow at the Manhattan Institute for Policy Research and a Pulitzer Prize winning author and journalist and Fox News contributor. So, Judy, as you just saw, the president said he did criticize Russian interference. White House sources are saying that at times the meeting on that subject with Putin was heated. Reince Priebus today saying that they, they had a substantial conversation. Uh, do you think the president acted appropriately? Uh, and what are we to make of all this? Look, Eric, the major question that needs to be answered at the moment is, did President Trump accept Vladimir Putin's, Putin's assurances? And we still don't have an answer because President Trump has not given us one. Well, actually, he's given us three different answers. He said during the press conference in Warsaw that uh, he believed that Russia probably meddled in the U.S. election. He also said that it could have been somebody else who meddled in the election. And then he said no one really knows for sure. So the fact of the matter is, even though his staff are running around trying to clean up the Twitter poop in the room, <laughs> no one really knows what the answer to this crucial well, question but, but is. But today, Ryan's previous in interview... Donald Trump doesn't want to have a... Well, let me interrupt you, because Ryan Priebus did say today in interviews that mm -hmm. the president did not accept that answer. In fact, Priebus said, said, quote, that he absolutely did not believe Putin. Well, we haven't heard that from the president. Why not? And another question, is Donald Trump going to contradict whatever Reince Priebus or Rex Tillerson said tomorrow. I mean, look, Mr. Tillerson said that they had discussed sanctions. He, had, he said that clearly in his news conference. He wasn't hiding. But Donald Trump said in his tweet they did not discuss sanctions, but that nothing would be done until their disagreements over Ukraine and Syria were solved. Now, you know, Mr. Trump consistently undercuts his staff and even Vice President Michael Pence. It's really very difficult, it must be, to work for Mr. Uh, Trump when he simply refuses to back the people who are pretending or hoping to put a positive spin on what he's saying. Well, you know, in the next interview that the president gives, he certainly will be asked about this and, you know, he'll, he'll give his answer. Well, yeah, in an interview, but when will that be? I mean, he certainly didn't want to have a news conference and didn't have a news conference. And even though he says that tweeting is a more direct way of communicating to the American people, there are some questions that, of course, he doesn't want to answer. The questions that keep coming up about more circumstantial evidence that his son, for example, was involved in a discussion that clearly did raise the issue of the campaign during the campaign. We just learned that today from the New York Times and CNN. I mean, the questions are going to keep occurring. The president doesn't want to answer them. You cannot answer the questions that the American people now have in 140 character tweets. Well, we certainly will get an interview at some point. We meaning uh, media in general, and he will certainly be asked about that. Donald Trump Jr. Uh, saying that the meeting with the lawyer was about an adoption, for example, and the president didn't know anything about it. But this all comes, you know, after the meeting, and, and basically, as you point out, a no news conference or explanation beyond the treats from the president. Let me read you what the Wall Street Journal uh, is reporting about all this tonight. They say, uh, quote, lawmakers in both parties and former U.S. officials on Sunday criticized Mr. Trump for not taking a stronger stance in his meeting with Mr. Putin, saying the president appeared overly willing to forgive Russia's efforts to interfere in the 2016 U.S. election. Mr. Trump has denied there was any collusion and said he doubts the intelligence community's assessment. So he's doubting the intelligence community's assessment of, of several intelligence agencies. So I guess bottom line, what do we expect you know, the president to do? I mean, is he going to have an argument for two hours with Putin? Are they going to go back and forth, you know, like Khrushchev banging the shoe? Uh, you know, at the United Nations, uh, is there a point where they just agree to disagree, which some have criticized, you know, even that point? 
Well, he could have said that. He could have tweeted that. We agreed to disagree, but he did not. He hasn't said anything about whether or not he accepts Putin's assurances. But look, Eric, look at what they agreed on. They agreed on a ceasefire, as we've agreed on before with the Russians, only to have it fall apart. But even more astonishing, we, he, according to Mr. Trump's tweets, he said that there was a possibility of setting up a cyber unit together to work on cyber hacking, whereas the U.S. intelligence community says that Russia is the biggest threat to the United States in the cyber field. I mean, this is truly the fox guarding the hen house. What is going on here? There are many, many questions way beyond the issue of the meddling in the election that Mr. Trump should be asked and should be forced to answer now. Well, we certainly will see when he, uh, when he if and when he does, well, he will give a, 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 an interview or perhaps a, a news conference and he'll be asked those questions uh, that uh, you have just listed out on the, the top of people's minds. Judy Miller, thank you.